This is Gold TV on BBC Two. God, Eric Cantona and the BBC teleprinter are amongst the recipients of a collection of impassioned letters from fans to the game. Stuart Cosgrove presents Dear Football. Nothing tests my emotions like football. Each week I confront my outrage in the form of an imagined letter to the manager, to the team, to the local paper. To George Best, even to God. In fact, I'll write to anyone who's learned to read in the hope that they'll calm my troubled mind. Football. Time has passed us by. The dark satanic stadiums of the past are decaying deeper into history. The turnstiles creaked, the cloth caps cheered, and the skinheads once moon stomped. But an image of the game is receding forever. A new era of football is threatening to overwhelm us. Each step is a final tribute to a half remembered past. The great goals, the primal scream, and the tangled bodies that died in football's cruelest hour. The turnstiles have come to a rusty end, the crush barriers given way to the relentless weight of change. Huddersfield, the cow shed has bid its last farewell. A new future is rising in the distance to house the fantasies of goals to come. Mom, why does Dad never come shopping with us on a Saturday afternoon? Yeah, Bill, should have seen me and the lads on the cot today. We chanted and screamed so loud it even scared me. Dear Nobby Style, where did you leave your teeth when you were out on the pitch? In a glass or in your coat pocket. I like my football on a Saturday, standing on the terraces behind the goal. Now everybody's building all seater stadiums under soil heat. Dear Grandad, you'd find it hard to believe what happens at football now. The flat caps have gone forever, the rattles have been thrown away. The people nowadays, well, some of the posh ones, watch from this restaurant thing. And the players, most of them are millionaires, but they only stay for a couple of years. I'm glad, I guess, that you're not here to see it now. Almost everything has changed. Well, not everything. Northampton Town is still crap. I took up the notion of football after I come to Dundee and I followed that, that team up. Last year was at the five minutes before the finish when Motherwell beat us. We were nothing, nothing. And, and they said, we'll have to be playing extra time. But they didn't. They just at the last minute, they got a goal. Motherwell did. And then we didn't have time to get another goal because the whistle blew. And that was it. <laughs> oh, I might have, oh, I was broken hearted. Oh, well, dear, dear, I said. But I've never lost faith in them, no. Dear God, do you really exist? If so, who do you support? I bet you're a Celtic fan. They think you are. I've always struggled to define football. It's so elusive. A bit like you, really. Is it a theatre for the people or an opiate of the masses? I know some fans treat it as a matter of life and death, and Bill Shankly thought it was more important than that. What do you think football is, God? 
a cathedral of emotions or the devil's game. players are bought, and anybody tells you that they can make players, then they're, they're very, very stupid. Oh, beautiful football. What a great goal. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. Oh, that's a magnificent goal. Dear David Coleman, it seems that you only do athletics now. Why not go back to football where you belong? I used to love hearing you say, 1-0. Clock! 1-0! Very quickly, the latest football news. Rangers and Celtic still 1-1 with about a minute left for play. Wimbledon beating Sutton United 3-2 in the FA Amateur Cup Final. Let's go through to the printer because I think the Scottish Cup Final's gone through. There it is, they must be playing extra time. Celtic 1, Rangers 1. Now Dear Teleprinter, uh, you have an uncanny two. ability Reading to wreck my Saturday night. Uh, left, uh, Liverpool, uh, Ever I'm sorry, Spurs rather, in second place. Uh, you they may be a computer now, you but you still wind me up. I'm a Hartlepool fan living in London, so I'm dependent on your generosity. When you say Hartlepool 1, what comes next? Maybe Huddersfield nil or Huddersfield 1? No, you always insist in playing the smart ass and type in Huddersfield 2. Thanks a lot. But why don't you loosen up and give us the kind of results we all want to see? Or better still, stick in a few comments and we'll really freak out those prats from Torquay. Dear bus driver, when you're driving your bus, do you examine the passengers? Can you tell who they support? When I get on a bus, I always look out for traitors. Sometimes you see it in their face. Sometimes you can see a football strip hidden beneath their jacket. Every small town has its traitors. They usually support Rangers or Manchester United, the big teams. They turn their back on their hometown looking for a bit of glory. If they're so keen to jump on bandwagons, why not make them travel home on one? You should ban traitors from your bus. It's the only language they understand. Mademoiselle, répétez après moi. Ou à E. Ou à E. Ou à E. Dear Clarissa, I'm writing to apologize for last Sunday. Your grandmother was very angry and said I behaved like an old fool. But it just breaks my heart to think you support United. Ou à E. Ou à E. Ou à E. C'est Ou à Cantona. You see, for over 70 years, our family's been city daft. And it hurts me to think you have photographs of that Ponce Cantona on your bedroom wall. Clarissa! You're not paying attention, you're daydreaming again. Of course, if you ended up marrying Franny Lee, I might forgive you, because then I'd be the happiest man on earth. Dear Workington Town Football Club, I want to complain about the meat pie that I bought at your home match against Matlock Town on the 20th of February 1988. It had no meat in it. Six and a half years later, you still haven't sent me a replacement nor an apology. You know, I still have the evidence to prove my claim, although it looks a little mouldy now. However, your pie wasn't the worst I saw in the Northern Premier League that season. At Buxton, there was too much juice in my pie and it blew up in my face when I bit into it. It ruined the anorak of the groundsman standing ten yards away. Okay. 
so maybe pies are better these days, but I didn't manage to get one at Elmley because I couldn't spare the 20 minutes for the trek across the car park. I didn't get one at Knowsley either if somebody had nicked the tea bar. Yours, Angie. Oh, P.S. I'm thinking of going vegetarian. Dear Banana, it's strange the way your image has changed over the years. I remember as a child you were a symbol of all that was creative in the game. I remember the Brazilians bending the ball round the defensive wall, defying velocity and turning sport into an art. Rivalino, one nil. I loved the banana kick, but now your image has changed forever. Dear Psycho, I've never seen you lose a 50-50 ball. Every time you go into battle, sorry, tackle, I feel a pain and excitement surging through my body. My mate Davey says he once saw you carrying a severed human leg one day. I'm compiling statistics for your career and I need some help with this one. Was it a right leg or a left leg? Dear Flamingos, why are you standing here in the middle of a pool when your team are playing at home? When I discovered that Scarborough are sponsored by Flamingoland, it gave me renewed faith in the absurdity of the game. I mean, it's okay for the big clubs. They can go through a catalogue of household names for the sponsorship. Manchester United have Sharp, Arsenal have JVC, Rangers have McEwen's Lager. But for the smaller teams, we have to flip through the yellow pages looking for a bankrupt builder. They used to say, play for the jersey, but how can you play for the jersey when it's sponsored by Patterson's The Plumbers? What's in it for your centre forward if he scores a hat trick? A new cistern for him and his teammates? said earlier when he pinched my opening line, this is the match of the day. <laughs> Dear Neil Young, 20 years ago, you wrote the classic, Only Love Can Break Your Heart. But only love can break your heart. Well, a short while ago, my beloved West Brom could only manage a 1-1 draw away at Bristol Rovers. As a result, we've now been relegated to Division 3 of the Football League for the first time in our history. At this point in time, I'd like you to know that it's not only love that can break your heart, Yours emotionally, Mark Pumphrey. Dear President Clinton, yippee, it's Yankee time. I'm delighted that the land of liberty is to host the 1994 World Cup. Sadly, I cannot be with you. Scotland have already been knocked out due to a refereeing conspiracy that was frankly bigger than Watergate. They say that America is the future of football, but as a fan, I can assure you that football is always better in the past. Yours, Stuart Cosgrove. P.S. Have a nice day. Missing you already. I still like my football on a Saturday. I go through the turnstiles with all the other fans. Even though they're building all seater stadiums, it's ironic that they still say they're sitting in the stands. Cause the terraces are gone. The terraces are gone. The terraces
17th, for one month, the world's greatest football tournament hits the BBC. 